not he's not considered a low level defender. Yeah, so no big in this particular case, no because of all this situation that took place in Florida with one of his co-defendants, he's not he what he initially walked in the case as a low level defendant, right? So what happened was over time, as they continued their investigation after the indictment, the case with the gun case came up. So that's how the indictment got superseded. Once the indictment got superseded, all his grounds changed because everything associated with his charges came directly from his phone. So he had no argument. That person pled out to their charges. There is no, there's no space for anything now. So now the only process he's going through, the reason why his case is dragging is they're literally trying to mitigate the case to get something under 15. Yeah, right now like, he's not at nothing under 15. Eight, he's actually eight. at 22. So it's either that or we're going to try to mitigate it try to act like he had such a horrible background and growing up, all these things were wrong with mm -hmm. him. And that's the reason why we're going to try to get him at the 172 months. That's hey, what's first going lady, on. Can you speak on, can you speak on, like, I know he put up a post because I put up a video about this whole situation like a few weeks ago when he put up a, a post in regards to him waiting until the sentencing guideline changes or something like that. Like, Yeah, so that's what's been going on because he has existing drug charges that he fled out to. He tried to keep his charges non-guilty, so he kept with the drug charges. Because he has the existing drug charges, they're waiting on an equal act to be, po um, to be passed so that he they're able to mitigate his sentence. So that will take his sentence over from the 20 years back down to the 15 years. That's the mitigating factor. That's what the postponement is coming from. Other than that, he pled out last year. He would have been sentenced by now. But his yeah, lawyer he said, is he put pushing up for this. And he put up codes That's what his lawyer is pushing for. His lawyer is hoping that the Equal Act get passed. And it's not just affecting his case. It's affecting every other black or brown person or Hispanic person, even white people that are sitting in prison for freaking crack cocaine charges. That's it. It's either we're going to talk from 100 to 1 to 20 to 1. It's better for it to be at 20 to 1 to 18 to 1. That's what they're fighting for. You hear me, nope. Chuck? Yeah. Right, this is my only thing. This is my only thing. And maybe Sis could build on this a little bit. To me, the only thing that looked crazy to me, I've been in the feds four times, homie. So I've been through that. I talk to niggas from the feds every day, literally, right? So the only thing that looked funny to me is the fact that they use a recording with his voice on it in court for the for them other niggas' cases just now, tension them niggas, right? And my brain and what for I know who? of the law, what I know of the law is for them to use a recording in this court of law. Without the reprisal, he's getting back on the pill because Casanova will come back later on and say, man, I ain't, that shit was a lie, I said. I feel they had to have a conversation with him and say, is this what you said and this what you meant? Cause we go play they never had that conversation with him. Okay, so they the just conversation with that him that never had saying, they had a third right, party. I, they had a third party witness state that that was Casanova's voice and that was Casanova's phone number. Does that answer your question? Okay. There's a fact. It was it was Malcolm Kenyon who confirmed that was that was Casanova's phone and Casanova's voice. What's up, bro? What's happening? <laughs> I just had to come clear some things up. But yeah, that was the answer to that question. Well, we just cleared it up. Definitely cloud chaser. It's clear because I like I, I I understand exactly what she said. She made it quite clear, and she had some good points. Like um. And even try gangster, you know what I'm saying? Him being, in, he was there in court, you know, unfortunate situation that happened. And, um, you know, shit, he even agrees with what talking about the third party, you know what I'm saying? The third party situation. So, anything about him speaking to the feds about the case is speculation and assumption because there was nothing that was ever presented that said that the feds spoke to him, he had any conversations with them, none of that. It was just, this is his voice. This is his man who was with him. This is who he called, and this is the person confirming it. So I spoke on several times where I heard people uh, trying to say Cash did something that they don't have any documentation of. And that's the only time I'm going to speak on it when it's a bunch of nonsense and people just spitting nastiness on somebody's name. So that man ain't they ain't presented no paperwork on that man yet that showed that he cooperated in that, in that case in no shape, form, or fashion. That's a fact. And niggas, no, niggas, no niggas, niggas got to think too, bro. If, if if he did talk to the feds or he talked to the state or whatever in that case, 
y'all already know that the prosecutors would have presented that shit because it would have made their case stronger. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have hid that shit.